live from the Marsh Theater in San Francisco. It's the Will and Willie Show. I'm Paul Wells. I'm Will Durst. And I'm Willie the Brown. So when Trump compares the emails to Watergate, who remembers Watergate? Okay. Who sees no comparison? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I hope there's one more shoe to drop on Friday. And I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's... But wait, I hope it isn't on Hillary. No, no. <laughs> No, I think it's going to be on Trump. They have to have something else. No, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that they, the news media pays a lot more attention to the faults of Hillary than they do to the faults. Of, you know, he's a total fault. It's like yeah. there's nothing about him that isn't fault. No, and they just keep shooting past it. Absolutely, and they give him millions of minutes of time and place. He's still the lead on absolutely everything until there's something that hits the wall with Hillary. And now it's uh, the new round of emails. I mean, why is it that people can't use a telephone? I mean, <laughs> I mean, well, this email... It's not even her emails. It's Wiener's emails. It, and, it, it's and even what, worse. So can you imagine what it's like? You, Wiener is... He's a smart guy. And I, I would suggest to you that he may have even been planning this a long time. Because they kicked him out of Congress. Basically. Well, it's Hillary's fate. She is destined to be smeared by wieners. <laughs> <laughs> but even when they run the story about the emails, the first part of the story is what Trump is saying. It's like inescapable and a, a word Michael um, Moore used in, in a letter he did in support of, of Hillary, actually, was called a messianic. And, he, and he, he just seems to have that ability to have people follow him, no matter where he's going or what he's saying. Well, but that Trump has been this way for a long time. You know that, I guess he announced what, May of... Um, June of last year. Yeah, last year. And, and he had like 15, 16, or 17 competitors. And, and I predicted after the first round with those competitors that he would be the nominee. And he had no plans. Clearly, he was not running for president. He was trying to get his show back. Uh, you know, that he had been terminated yeah. on, on that crazy show. And I think he was Slippery trying to get friends. back in front of the people who make those decisions and show what the brand really was like. Because he didn't put any of the things in place you need to run for president. And then, lo and behold, he ends up wiping out Lion Ted and... Little Marco and Sleeping Bush. He he literally wiped all of those guys out and, and, and the lady out as well. Clean sweep. And if he had, I'm glad that he got the religion and decided he could be president because it gave us a chance for three months to watch him just commit mayhem on himself. I mean, it was just incredible what he did from the time he got the nomination till September. Ordinarily, you know, you kind of go away after you got the nomination and you surface again. And if he had done that, we would know how bad he really is. He would have been able to conceal it for another two or three months. And we'd be in real trouble with Hillary. The fact that he exhausted himself, his f alleged funny lines are not funny anymore. Nobody is amused by what he says and insults and the kind of names he does. And the research that's been done on him, on you know the the grave digging that's been done on him. And sure enough, uh, in many cases there were a lot of skeletons in one grave in his world. And the results are that you know he's held up to what he is. But still, the media just loves to do Trump, and you have no idea why. He's not that interesting. He doesn't dress well. He, he, he's got a bad hairdo. Uh, and he says nothing that makes sense. Well, you'd, you'd think that that ought to be the last thing you would put a mic in front of. He should be having to buy time, period. But he gets it all for free. The only thing he doesn't have, fortunately, is an army. 
Hillary has an army. And come uh, next week, and the army demonstrated itself with all of those people that have gone to vote early on. You know, like, I don't know, what is it, 25% of the people have already voted? You know, it's kind of difficult to fix an election when people vote that early. Because <laughs> they can check on them. You can have it checked out. But if 25% of the people voted, when I looked at those lines in, in, in North Carolina, for an example, the lines were made up of more people that looked like Democrats uh, than looked like Trumpites. On almost nobody in line with the caps on that said, Make America Great Again, or any of those kinds of things. And so it, I'm frankly amazed at uh, uh, how inept. Uh, his operation really has been. Do you think it will be revealed on Tuesday as uh, his his Achilles heels that he didn't put together an operation? Because right now there's a poll by ABC that has him ahead by two points. I, national poll. Yeah, every day. It, uh, fortunately for us, the election is in each one of the states. <laughs> it is not nationwide, uh, period. And in those states where he seems to be running ahead, well, you know, there are no real people in those states. <laughs> there are people that are like Trump uh, in those states. They're not, they don't think through on anything. Fortunately for us, in the Senate races, we have some real infrastructure in your whole state. Wisconsin. Yeah, you got Feingold. Feingold's guy. back. He's uh, back. And he's up on Johnson. Johnson is just, a, a, as Trump would say, just a disaster. Believe me. Believe me. <laughs> a disaster. Uh, the but biggest. The last big poll I saw, it was, uh, it was dead even. It was dead even. And there's like But s it, Johnson seven is the incumbent. Yeah. yeah. When you're dead even as an incumbent, you're in trouble. You literally are in trouble. If you, mm -hmm. I, when I served in life, yeah, as an elected official, I didn't ever want to be dead even, because uh, I always felt that I was dead if I was uh, even, just even. Yeah, just even. <laughs> I needed a vengeance. And then you know they got uh, Evan By in Indiana. Indiana. Uh, they've got some, and they got Duckworth in Illinois, and they got that the, that that other woman, that Attorney General in New Mex in in uh, New Hampshire. Is that where it is? Yes, yeah. running against Kelly Ayotte. Yeah, uh, and so there are some really good numbers. And then you got the Latino woman in Nevada uh, that uh, is driving the vote up there. Uh, everywhere that's happening, that's a Hillary vote. The people who are going there and find that on the ballot, find that Senate candidate, um, they'll find Hillary first. And so I'm certain, and, and, and now, I went over to, you know, to watch him making these calls and I just go, wait a minute, these guys are calling Indiana and they're calling Ohio and they're mm -hmm. right from here. Yes. And I said, won't those people know you're calling from downtown San five. Francisco? No, you know, what the drill is, all these cell phones now, you no longer have long distance. You, you mm -hmm. really do. You can call anywhere you want to and people have no idea, um, right. you know, that you're not next door. And I. This one woman was sitting there, she's lying. Oh, yeah, I'm down the street, honey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're on the Will and Willie show, and we're on Facebook Live. Just getting underway, Heather Knight, the uh, columnist of uh, City Insider, with the Sunday section that Willie's World is in, is our guest in the next segment. We're going to do a Q&A with the audience here at the Marsh Theater. And I'm going to get up and move the pinatas on camera. <laughs> oh, yes. Put them on the seat. Let's give them give the guest seat because it's, it's on. There we go. It says here, what top secret emails? <laughs> and here it says, make a great America great again on his pitchfork. <laughs> so there, the, the, the last time, the only time you'll ever see both of them in the same seat at the same time. <laughs> yeah, because he's huge. Yeah. <laughs> Locker room banter, my ass. He hasn't been in a gym in 50 years. <laughs> I, I'm just so depressed. I can't believe she's letting this slip through the, her fingers. And I totally agree with you. Is that 
Uh, everybody's paying attention. Oh, we're investigating Wiener's email, so there might be something. But and then he comes out and says it's a it's a redux of the whole thing. I mean, she's got she's got that and the Clinton Foundation, and that's it. That's all they can get her on. And he's got all these things, and they can't they can't. He's Teflon. Him. He's beyond Teflon. He's a space age polymer at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> nothing sticks to him though. I, yeah. As a matter of fact, he almost just he ignores it in the middle of any presentation. Uh, he m makes up a new lie, and it's really difficult to uh, do fact checking <laughs> on what cannot be a fact. There's but no nobody calls him on it. I you know. know. You know, his supporters say, "Oh, he never mocked a disabled guy." We got the tape. It's right here. How can you say that's not mock? Oh, he never did that. Oh, he never did that. Oh, and they just and nobody sl dick slaps him. Somebody should just take out their pants and dick slap him. Especially Kellyanne Con. Okay, I've gone too far. Yes, <laughs> I've gone too far. <laughs> But, I, but I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable that uh, <laughs> on election day right. next Tuesday, the numbers are going to, as they come in and they're being reported, there will be 270 electoral votes for Hillary. Mm -hmm. What? What if he wins the popular vote and loses the electoral vote? Who who gets to explain it to him? <laughs> <laughs> Al Gore. <laughs> Putin. <laughs> Putin would never lose a vote. Uh, no explanation <laughs> would be offered. Period. I, he'd offer him some assistance. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine he, he offered to send over, you know, uh, electoral watchers uh, from Russia. No, no, but let me, let me tell you, with, with all this electronic equipment we have out there now where the voting is going on, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the same people that have been hacking are not in the process of already hacking, and believe me, the early voting in some cases is showing some errors, allegedly, in Texas, my home state, which doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, they show that a vote cast uh, for Hillary turns out to be counted for Trump in one particular location. Wow. Wow. And that could Fortunately, the, it can't that, all be Texas. That could give you, you know, a, I, I don't know how you could can avoid that potential in multiple places around the country. Believe me, those people who manage these electronic instruments. I was in a restaurant the other night, and and this daughter of the person that was I was in the restaurant with uh, looked at my cell phone and she said, "Where'd you get that? What do you mean? Where did I get that?" She said, "How do you?" And, uh, I told her, she said, that cell phone of yours is about your age. <laughs> so she said, but I think I can help you out on it. Let me have it. And when I got it back, it had probably 50 new apps yeah. on it. And she had an app on it where I no longer have to read my uh, text messages. I can push a button and that voice um, series yeah, yeah. friend. Yeah, well, series friend. Yeah, yeah series uh -huh. friend. Well, read me back my text message. Yeah. <laughs> so I, on the way, and she showed me how to do this. So on the way out the door, I said, Can you do me a favor? She said, Yeah. I said, Undo everything you did. <laughs> she said, Why? I said, Everything you did exposes me potential. Like Hillary has been exposed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be that place where Putin no, no. can cut into my action. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you do on November 9th if Trump wins? Uh, does California secede? Yeah. Can, we, can we start a Can secession? we build a wall around it? We'll build a wall around yeah. San Francisco, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Sure. We already have most of a moat. Fifteen dollar fifteen dollar cover and a two drink minimum to get in. Right. Well he isn't gonna win, so there's no reason to even speculate on what one would do 
if he won. I tell you a great story though, the other day that, um, and I'm, it's going to be the lead in my column uh, on Sunday. Uh, the guy said to me, speaking at the Fairmount, the guy said to me, uh, uh, are you aware of what happens if Donald Trump wins? I said, yeah, he's not going to win. What are you talking about? He said, just listen to me for a second. He said, you may not have heard this, but it's a good story. I said, what is the story? He says, if Donald Trump wins, just think about it. It'll be the first time in the history of this country that a white billionaire has moved into public housing previously occupied by a black family. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think on that note, we'll uh, end our first segment here, live from the Marsh Theater in San Francisco. It's the Will and Lily Show, and we'll be right back with City Insider Heather Knight of the San Francisco Chronicle. America is still the place. 